What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and Twitch has uh, an issue that we need to discuss, uh, possible solutions, but it involves our kids, so I think it's obviously an important one, which places this squarely in the category of videos that I will ask you to share uh, on social media so that we can get Twitch's attention, because this article has been out now for a little while, and uh, as of yet, it hasn't picked up any traction. I interviewed the author of it, the journalist, Richard Lewis, and uh, I wanna point out also that video games journalism isn't all bad. If you were on my live stream yesterday, you could plainly see that even though Richard Lewis and I don't necessarily hold the same opinions on everything, two people can come together and uh, discuss important issues in video games, and in, um, in, in terms of Twitch, in this case, in eSports. Uh, I think it was an important lesson or an important example, not to like weirdly pat myself on the back, but just to give an example of how people can come together when things are important. And um, Richard, based on my interview with him, seems like one of the good ones, one of the good video games journalists, somebody that does the actual work. I'm not aware of all the history of the guy. I judge people on my interactions with them, and my interaction was very good. So uh, it will be one of those cases where I link not the archive, but the actual article because I want to um, uh, share it. So Richard Lewis wrote this article saying, is Twitch doing enough to protect the children on its platform? Now, I get it. The headline is a little, <laughs> you know, thick as he kids. But every weekend, uh, you know, without fail, you know, if you want to watch the, the biggest pay-per-view event in the, in the world, it's live streaming on Twitch. Twitch has an issue with that. If you want to watch, uh, like, literal prawn, it's probably streaming on Twitch, uh, especially with sub-only mode nowadays. Um, these are issues that... I'm not sure Twitch can ever really do anything but play an elaborate game of whack-a-mole in. Um, but this issue uh, involves kids and uh, creeps. All right, we'll just put it that way. Uh, Amazon-owned Twitch remains the number one live streaming platform on the market, having 15 million active users in the last count. Policing such a sizable platform is in no means is in is in no mean is no mean feat. Oh, I don't know if I'm not reading that right. They often found themselves publicly criticized simultaneously for being overzealous in some matters and ineffective in others. So he's referring to uh, their in, uh, in unequal enforcement of their terms of service, which I would, which I've spoken about before. And the interesting thing is, I wonder if the reason this article isn't sharing, isn't uh, spreading, which again, I'm asking, I'll ask again that you consider liking and sharing this video or sharing the original. Either one doesn't matter um, because it's about Twitch and not YouTube. And um, exposing YouTube is a better headline and nobody seems to be writing about it. Now, he does give some information here. I'm not going to read the whole article to this to give you a reason to read it. But uh, in February 2019, uh, YouTube he talks about the guy with the kids videos and all the timestamps and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, naturally, there was several Reddit posts discussing the shocking find. Among the discussion was an account called the Ponzo. Listed uh, evidence of similar situation occurring at Twitch. Now, nobody's covered this. They've posted several screenshots of children under the age of 13 streaming via mobile phones or laptops with people in Twitch chat making suggestive requests. And he has all the receipts, too. So we're going to get to that. The post would be gilded and heavily upvoted as many users would make suggestions for the poster to share their findings with news outlets, giving several ideas um, as to which ones would be the best. And interestingly, as I talked to the author of this article, he said that um, even this website, Deserto, if I said it right, I think, originally turned down the article, if I remember it correctly. But you know dang well Kotaku got the article. You know dang well Polygon, Eurogamer, all these people got the article and nobody covered it, which is... Really, really odd, isn't it? During that time, the anonymous user took the advice and contacted several publications they would be thought they would be interested in the story. Nothing happened except Twitch suddenly deleted the incriminating VODs and banned a handful of people of the more egregious accounts. In the interest of transparency, it's worth noting 
that they suspect it was this publication that was responsible for contacting Twitch, though they decided not to run the story. So originally, Deserto did not run the story, did reach out to Twitch. Twitch made some actions, uh, but again, in the whack-a-mole thing. So now here's where we get to the meat of the investigation that's really interesting. And what's uh, really shocking about it is that it's totally repeatable. Um, Redditor continued to monitor travel and outdoors section of Twitch, as this is default the default category for the mobile Twitch app, meaning if you're a kid, you want to stream to Twitch, and you don't know like how to change the category, how to edit your title, this is where you land. They would scroll down to the children who were streaming without adult supervision and had one or two viewers. Constant, consistently, they would find Twitch accounts in the chat seeming to be engaged in inappropriate activity. Over the course of 10 days, they found multiple incidents instances of the children, many of them apparently under the age of 13, which happens to be a requirement on Twitch, having chat users make suggestive comments to them. In addition to this, many of the users would also make requests to the children, asking them to perform certain acts that range from appealing to certain uh, preferences to direct um, adult acts based on uh, performing on camera. The most concerning of which was the frequency with which they saw it happening. They could find instances most days they checked. Now by April, uh, shout out to Reddit user, sorry, not, I love you. Sorry, not, I love you. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, had grown, uh, had grown frustrated at Twitch's lack of action and publicity are publicly tweeted at Twitch support with examples of the grooming, despite him taking esports journalist Rod Slasher Breslau, which I'll send this video to as well, um, who subsequently made a tweet, a quote team asked what Twitch was doing about it. Nothing further came of that exchange. In May, they would make several more posts continuing the examples in the subreddit are Livestream Fail, a subreddit dedicated to discussing streaming culture. Um, these would similarly be upvoted by users, would make suggestions about the best way to get attention and what was happening. Somewhere in the name, somewhere my name came up and I woke to a DM on my Twitter account that day and after a brief conversation, they sent me the archive of the videos and screenshots. One of the examples shows a user called Little Jimmy 7676 continually requesting that two girls uh, take their clothes off for them, then states he wants them to perform certain acts on camera. While the VOD of the stream is no longer publicly available on the site, videos left the channel, left on the channel, show the two girls referring to a user named as Little Jimmy, discussing which one of them will undress for him. And this article goes through uh, some really disgusting stuff in, in the chat, like way beyond what I'm probably even going to be allowed to say in this video. Um, the reason I dance around words, obviously, is I want <clears throat> I want the video to spread, and uh, YouTube doesn't give us any guidelines, so I'm just guessing at what words might uh, be no-nos. The offending account is no longer available on Twitch, though it isn't clear whether it was banned for the user themselves or the user deleted it in a bid to evade any reprises, reprisals. In another example, the screenshot shows three users making suggestive remarks and requests that include two underage girls. Uh, one user asking if they would put on high heels and making them multiple requests for the lick each other's faces and engage in a twerk battle. Again, two accounts are no longer on Twitch. So, I mean, there are endless, and I'll, I'll say, I mean, some of these are just really gross, uh, really, really gross. Um, but the question becomes, what can Twitch really do about this? You know, like I said earlier in this video, there's endless stuff getting streamed on Twitch all the time that they just simply cannot uh, reasonably um, police. And I believe, I, I mean, I understand that. I think uh, Twitch increasing some securities on age verification would probably likely be a reasonable solution. And I'm going to Hope that you in the chat, in the comment sections down below, I thought I was streaming, in the comment section down below can share with me some ideas for me to share with Twitch. Uh, I have a feeling if we all do our jobs and spread this video around, we're going to get some traction. And we're going to hear from them. I don't know the best way to solve this issue, but certainly you need to, uh, I mean, I don't know, taking a picture of driver's licenses or state IDs uh, to manually uh, verify accounts. Uh, certainly this fix would be absorbently expensive, but you're also talking about a platform that makes probably billions of dollars, which is owned by the biggest company in the world. I forwarded my findings to a senior member of Twitch staff who stated they would pass it on to somebody in their trust and safety team and request 
that they make contact with me for additional comment. Now, maybe this means the other thing is maybe you could just have roaming moderators in that category, knowing that it's an issue and be banning accounts uh, which of people that are not of age. Much like before, what happened was some of the accounts belonging to the kids were banned, so I knew my complaints had indeed been seen, yet there was no contact forthcoming. I hadn't shared everything with the Twitch staff member and that made it and had made it clear, yet Twitch's trust and safety team still hadn't made any attempts to get in touch. Essentially, Richard had told them, this is just a small sample. Um, this is a bigger issue. You know, let's work on this. And then they just kind of banned a few accounts and, and moved down with their day. Much like the Reddit user that had uncovered this uh, before me, I grew frustrated and publicly tweeted it to its support on June 6th. Still nothing. And that's why I talked to Richard yesterday so that we could work together to signal boost this issue. Um, I'm not trying to cause a panic, obviously, uh, but I, I, do I would like to see Twitch address this publicly and increase uh, some, put some resources on figuring out how to... Um, be a little bit faster about this. Um, and then he talks about some other stuff, which, you know, he brings up examples of live streaming uh, really bad things. Uh, we contacted the National Society of Prevention uh, and shared our findings. In recent years, the charity has issued multiple warnings about dangers of online technology from YouTube interacting with underage children to Fortnite potentially being gateway uh, for creeps. I mean, we know TikTok is, right? It's a, it's a playground for creeps. Um, this is a, you know, ultimately, uh, I think the real solution here is parents, as always, keeping an eye on their kids. If your kid is 13 years old and they have a cell phone, you better know what they're doing with it. Or maybe don't give them a smartphone, maybe give them a flip phone. You know, the idea of a 13 year old needing a cell phone is absurd. Um, I know that sounds boomerish of me, but you don't need one. Um, you know, when I was a kid, my parents knew when I was online. Uh, knew when I was offline. They and that was in the '90s. Okay, so I mean, this ultimately, I believe, is a symptom of this uh, allowing my kids' tablet to to babysit them um, while I go in the other room and I watch The Bachelor. Uh, I see it all over in uh, parents that are my age and parents that are older than me with young kids. These kids are attached to their tablets all day, every day, and they have smartphones, and the parents are happy that the kid's quiet. And then before you know it, they're streaming and some creep is having them twerk. All right. So, yes, parents absolutely need to uh, take better control of the situation, and that's what you sharing this video or the article will do. Hopefully, we'll inform more parents that this is going on. Um Twitch, I think, can do something to uh, increase patrols in that particular category, um, add more age verification things, especially for brand new accounts. Uh, there's a lot of things that they could do, and I'm hoping that everyone sharing this story will help get some action, help raise awareness. I hope you were informed by this video, and we'll talk to you again real soon.